In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a point-to-site VPN connection in Azure. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. A while ago, I did a video on setting up a site-to-site -site VPN connection between an Azure VNet gateway and a routing and remote access server. Not everyone needs a dedicated VPN into their Azure network. This video covers another option of using a point-to-site VPN to connect to a host in Azure. Specifically, I go over how to deploy a basic gateway and enable certificate-based authentication. Before that, please subscribe, like, share, and click the bell icon to get a notification of new content. Most Microsoft services don't require VPN connectivity. Past services such as Azure Functions, App Services, and Azure SQL are accessible and managed from the public internet. Some services are not accessible from the internet. For example, IaaS servers can be deployed without publicly accessible RDP or SSH access, or services that have been configured to prevent public access, private endpoints, for example. Those require network connectivity to the private VNet. Some organizations connect their on-premises network to the Azure VNet using point-to-point -point VPN or express route connections. In this configuration, users can access Azure resources on the private VNet directly from their corporate network. How then do we allow network access when there's no site-to-site -site VPN or express route in place? The solution is point-to-site connections into the Azure VNet. Let's start with an overview. A VPN creates a secure tunnel to pass private network traffic over a public network. A point-to-site VPN is initiated by a single endpoint, a workstation in this case, and terminates at a gateway on the network, an Azure VNet gateway in this example. All resources on that remote network are available to the client by default. Network restrictions may limit that access, however. Azure point-to-site VPN connections support a combination of different authentication methods. These authentication methods include certificate either self-signed or from an enterprise security authority, radius authentication with Windows Active Directory, Azure AD authentication, this also supports MFA. And Azure point-to-site VPN supports three VPN standards. OpenVPN is a SSL TLS-based VPN. It works over standard TCP port 443. It can be used with iOS, Android, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol is a proprietary SSL-based VPN that connects over TCP port 443. It is only supported on Windows clients. IKE v2 is a standard-based VPN. It can be used with Mac clients 10.11 or above. IKE is not supported on the basic gateway. In this video, I go over deploying a basic gateway with certificate-based authentication using a self-signed certificate. This is a good option for small environments and test labs. The basic gateway is the least expensive but comes with some limitations such as it only supports secure socket tunneling protocol. That's fine for Windows environments, but it's not if there's mixed clients. Virtual network gateways come in different sizes and SKUs. Here's a chart of the different gateway sizes and features. There's an option to deploy VNet gateways to availability zones for high availability. Those gateways are indicated with the AZ at the end of the SKU. As you can imagine, the larger and more options the gateway, the higher the price. Review the pricing information from Microsoft's website for your region. The price goes up along with the bandwidth and the number of tunnels with each version. Outbound data rates also apply. A certificate is needed to authenticate the connection. This can be self-signed certificates or enterprise certificates. This example goes over using self-signed certificates. I'm going to use PowerShell to create a self-signed root certificate. The root certificate is used to generate one or more client certificates. The root certificate is uploaded to the gateway and used to authenticate clients. Let's walk through the process. The example coming up assumes you have an Azure subscription with a VNet in place. The steps we'll walk through include creating a VNet gateway, creating a root certificate, creating a client certificate from that root, Exporting the certificates, configuring the gateway for point-to-site connections, configuring the client, and then finally we'll revoke a certificate to stop a client from logging in. Here I am at the Azure portal. And if we go into virtual networks, we can see I have a West VNet that's already been deployed. So that's in place. 
Now I'm going to set up a VNet gateway. I'll go to create a resource and type in network gateway. And here is virtual network gateway. I'll click create. I'll leave the subscription as is. I'll give it a name. I'll call it West GW. Next, I'll change the region to West US. That's the same region as the virtual network. I'll leave the gateway type as VPN, but notice there is the option for express route. I'll leave the VPN type route based. And under SKU, I'll select basic. And basic is a limited feature VNet gateway, but it's a fraction of the cost of the next level. So this is what I use for my test lab. It's also good for demo environments or dev environments, but it does lack some of the features that the other VNet gateways have. There's only one generation for basic, so I'll leave it as generation one. Virtual network, I will select West VNet. And here it asks me for a subnet range for the gateway subnet. And it only needs a couple IP addresses, so I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to change this to 254 and give it a slash 27. I don't need to allocate all 254 of those IP addresses. But if you don't care, you can leave it as default. Either way, it'll work. I'll create a new public IP address and I'll call it West GWIP. And for this, I'll leave enable active active mode and configure BGP as disabled. Next, I'll go to tags. I'll leave that blank for now. And go to review and create. So validation passed, and now I'll hit create. The deployment is underway. This will take uh, 45 minutes, maybe even longer, depending on how busy things are but it is not a quick deployment. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll be back once it's done. Okay, the virtual network gateway has been deployed. It did take it close to an hour to finish. The next step is to generate the certificates. I'm gonna create a root certificate and then based on that root certificate, create two client certificates. So the first thing I'll do is open up PowerShell as an administrator. I'm going to run a new self-signed certificate command in PowerShell. This is going to create the root certificate and put it in the certificate store for the user. I'll make this available on my blog, so just check the link below the video and you should be able to find the command there. And notice for this certificate, I'm using West as part of the name, just so I can tell the difference because I already have a certificate for my central VNet gateway in the central region. You can name these anything you want. So now that that's done, I'll create the first client certificate. So this will be West P2S Client Cert 1. And there's the thumbprint. And next, I'll create the second one. You notice this has a different thumbprint. So with one root certificate, you can create multiple client certificates and hand them out to different users. That way they're not all using the same client cert. And that's important because if you have to revoke somebody's certificate, you can just revoke the one client certificate without affecting the rest of the clients. The next step is to open up the user's certificate store. This is the user store, not the local machine store. Let me just clear some of this out of here. There we go. Now if I go to Personal, Certificates, you can see I have three certificates here. I've got the root cert and then two client certs. I've got a couple other, again, those are for other things, but just notice these ones that start with West. So the first thing I'm gonna do is export the root certificate. We'll go on right click, All Tasks, Export. I'll click Next. I'm not going to export the private key. I'll select Base64 encoding for a .cer file. Then I'm gonna browse to the desktop. I'll call this West Root Certificate. And save. Once I'm done, click Finish and the export was successful. I'm using multiple monitors, so you can't see it there, but it is exported. So with this, I'm just gonna quickly export that root certificate so I can get the cert and upload it to the VNet gateway. 
but you could also export the self-sign cert with a private key to back it up someplace safe. That way, if this computer goes away, you can add that root certificate to another computer and generate more client certs. Now I'm going to export the first client cert. In this one, we're going to do some different settings. We are going to export the private key. I'm going to use personal information exchange, the .pfx suffix. I'll leave the include all certificates and enable certificate privacy. I'll give it a password. Don't lose the password. And I'll export it to the desktop again. And I'll do the same thing for the second cert. I'll export the private key. Include all certificates in the path and enable certificate privacy. I'll give it a password. We'll call this one West Client Cert 2. There we go. Now I have those three certificates on the desktop. I move them over to the second one so we can see them. And on the first one, I'm going to open with Notepad. And I'll copy everything between Begin Certificate and End Certificate. Make sure you get every letter. Next, we're going to add this to the gateway. So let's go back to the portal. We're going to go to the resource. And in the gateway, I'm going to point to Site Configuration. Configure now. It will ask for an address pool. This is the IP address pool that clients will get when it's connected. The address pool is the dynamically assigned IP addresses for the clients. Make sure it doesn't overlap with the IP space on the VNet or any other subnet the client may try to access, such as on-premises network, if you have a VPN or express route between the VNet and your on-premises network. For this, I'm going to use 172.16.1.0 24. For the name, I'll call it West Root Cert. And under Public Certificate Data, I'm just going to paste in the information we copied from Notepad. So that's the certificate. And then click Save. I'll wait for that to finish saving. If this was a different SKU, I'd have options for tunnel type and authentication type when setting up the VPN connection. This is a basic SKU, though, so the options are limited. OK, it looks like that finished. Let's download the VPN client. It will take a minute or so to build that client and download it. There it goes. So this is finished. The gateway is deployed and the certificate has been uploaded. Let's set up the client next. I've got a virtual machine running on this. I'm going to open up. I'm going to copy the two client certificates over. I don't need the root certificate for this. I'm also going to copy over that client. I could log in from this machine and download it from the portal, but I'm just going to copy it over. The first step is to unzip this client. Now we have three folders in there. One's generic, and that's an XML document with settings for the client. I'm going to go back, and there's a version for 32 and 64-bit. I'm going to go to the AMD 64 version and run the client. And this will set up the client specifically for the VNet we deployed. Before I go on to the next step, I'm just going to open up the VPN connection. And here is West VNet. So now I can double click on it and connect. OK, so here it's saying that a certificate could not be found. OK, I knew that would happen because we didn't install the certificates. 
So let's go into West Client Certificate 1. I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to import it for the current user. Everything's default. I have to enter in that password we used to secure the certificate. And the rest is default settings. And I'll click yes to install the cert. Now if I come back and try to connect again, I'll click connect, continue. Now it's establishing a connection. And I'm connected. So I'm going to go to the portal. I have a VM running in West US connected to that VNet with an IP address of 10.1.0.4. Let's try to RDP to that. I'll click connect. There it goes. If we go back to that VM, you can see it has no public IP address. So I'm accessing this by its private IP address without exposing the RDP port to the internet. Let me just minimize that. If I disconnect, you can see it stops right away. If I connect again, it will reconnect. There it goes. So we use the first certificate for this. Let's go into the user certificate store. We go to Personal, Certificates. If I open the certificate by double-clicking on it and go into the details, I'm looking for a thumbprint. So I'm going to copy this thumbprint, then come back to the portal. I'm go to my Virtual Networks, West VNet, go to my Gateway, Point to Site Configuration. I'm going to call this Client Cert 1 and add that thumbprint. Now it doesn't like that because I have spaces in it, but I can pull them out. I will point out you can also pull that from PowerShell. So now it has the thumbprint and I'll click Save. Also notice we can see the allocated IP address, so that's the one client connected. I'll let that finish saving. Okay, so that's done. That finished saving, and these saves do take a couple minutes to, to run through. Uh, just be aware of that. Now we have the thumbprint for Client Cert 1 in the revoked certificates. And let's go back. We're connected. It didn't disconnect, but let's, let's disconnect and try reconnecting. Well, I've got uh, authentication failed because the certificate is not valid. So good, that worked. So now this client can no longer connect. So let's do this. Let's delete this and import the second certificate. So refresh over here. Now we can see that Client Cert 2 is installed. Let me connect now. This was attempting to reconnect in the background. Let's see if it reconnects. And again, this is just an RDP connection to a server back on the VNet. I'm just using this to test connectivity. And you can see it worked. So that's it. That's how you create the certificates, add the certificate to a client and to the VNet gateway, download the configuration file, install the client, connect to the VPN endpoint, and revoke a certificate. That's it for the demo. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for new content. Thanks for watching.